Ron Hart is a syndicated columnist in newspapers all over the country, and he's always got a lot to say about the state of the world, politics, and everyday life. He does it with his own brand of libertarian humor. He's a good friend of the show. We're happy uh, to have him here many times, and we welcome him back. Here's Ron Hart. Ron, good to have you back on the show, and I want to jump right into it because uh, Joe Biden this week has been about as incoherent as usual, but you figured out a trick that you've been talking about to understand him when he gives a speech. Help us all with that. Yeah, I think the best way to do with the speech is have him flip the teleprompter around the other way and we can read it. It's, it's just easier on everybody that way. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. I think it might be better and we would understand more uh, because we could at least articulate the words a little more clearly. Uh, this yeah, week, it's not very coordinated. Uh, it kind of makes the Donner ex <laughs> exhibition look like a coordinated effort right now. Laurel Hardy, you know, pushing that piano up the stairs. that kind of make them look like they knew what they were doing with this administration <laughs> going about their business right now. Hillary Clinton is making noise that she may be tanned and ready, ready to come back yeah. in 2024. Do you think that's serious? Yeah, I mean, only I think that guy in Paris, you know, in that Paris jail involved with Epstein uh, killed himself. Well, that just tells me she may be running. She actually may be running, so. <laughs> Between her and Bill, they may be the first Baptist, first Baptist in America to run a crime family. So that's a uh, historic <laughs> first right there, Governor. <laughs> oh no, no, there's there's some others I'm aware of that have done probably every bit of that and more. So uh, they would <laughs> they would be among many along the way who have done that. Uh, you've had a lot to say about what's happened to our neighbor in the north in Canada. Uh, you've even called Justin Trudeau, I love this, the Teen Beat Magazine Prime Minister. Your assessment of what's happened in uh, Canada and with uh, the esteemed Prime Minister. Yeah, he's good word about COVID and, and all. He, he's, he's, he doesn't understand economics very well. These truckers are at the, at the border. In fact, it's very important that these truckers get to Detroit, Governor, because they got a lot of midterm election votes in those trucks. They're going to need them for November, so they need to get there for the for the Democrats. But you know, he only really understands things are bad. You know, when he can't get what he needs, for example, shoe polish. I mean, he's he's down to a very little bit of shoe polish with all the rules he's put in that country. You just put a little bit on two fingers and put it right there, and it may be perfect. Oh my gosh! You know, it's almost like he's trying to impersonate Fidel Castro. And I'm not trying to be utterly unkind. I'm trying to be realistic. This is a guy who has acted like a tyrant. And he's even called the people who drove the trucks uh, Swatsa waving Nazis. I, I, I'm just stunned that a prime minister would think that the working class people of his country are, are somehow so beneath him that he could call yeah. them such a thing. No, uh, I, truckers are good people. <laughs> and I think there's, there's this champagne liberalism among these uh, elites like he and, uh, you know, he, he, he inherited the prime minister in business from his dad. You know, he got the prime minister in business ha handed down to him. So he's the worst of them all. I mean, he's suspended, you know, the, 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 the GoFundMe accounts. He takes people's money there. He's slashing tires on trucks. It just, it, it feels terrible. It feels very Hitler-like. And, I, and I, I'm ashamed that he's doing that. It's embarrassing to the world. It's embarrassing to him. And, and I think the Canadian people are having a peaceful protest there. Uh, he's afraid they're going to get COVID. You know, he says, just like he got COVID, you know. And, you know, you know, also, Governor, I don't know if you do this. <laughs> Queen, Queen uh, Elizabeth got COVID, too, just like you did at age 90. So her symptoms were mild. <laughs> she just coughed up $20 million. She just coughed up $20 million. That's all she did. So. I wish I could cough up $20 million. Uh, and I hope my uh, <laughs> Prince symptoms Andrew. are uh, yeah. no worse than hers and hers no worse than mine. Uh, we just got finished with Olympics halfway around the world, moving away from Canada. Um, ratings for people watching the Olympics, all-time low, down 40%. NBC took a financial bath to spend the kind of money they did to get them, only to find out not many people wanted to watch. Why is that? Uh, they're boring. You know, the, the, the parade of nations, I like to watch that, Governor, because you know, I always have to pick the countries out where we don't have troops anymore. That's always kind of fun to do, so... Um, and Canada was nice. They, they tried to rehabilitate their reputation. And what do you, what do you give China, a country that gave the world COVID? Uh, you know, they had these twelve-year-old kids out there. They were kind of parading around. Uh, they had a bunch of twelve-year-old kids. They must have had let let two shifts off at the Nike plant to get that many twelve-year-olds out there. But they did it, and they looked good in the world's eyes. So, 
<laughs> but uh, it was good to see artistry flourish in a brutal, you know, it's good to see artistry flourish in a brutal dictator community, you know, like, like China that, that could actually happen. Can't wait to see what happens when Canada gets it. <laughs> Ron, before I let you go, I got to uh, give you an opportunity to uh, pay tribute to one of uh, your mentors and one of the funniest people that ever wrote columns, that's P.J. O'Rourke. I know you were a big fan of his. Yeah, he was a good friend, a great guy, an inspiration. Uh, I think you, you, you're kind of along the same mold. You can be conservative, but you can also have a sense of humor and laugh at things and not be a stodgy type of conservative. And he was the first one kind of the libertarian-wise that was uh, really a mentor to me when I was in Memphis and Georgetown and, and studied his work and just liked him a lot. He became a friend, ignored my book. If you get a chance, read all his uh, all his works if you can. It's just it's just solid stuff. I mean, he just he, he just had a way of writing things that was just beautiful, and um, I, I just he'll be he will be missed. He will be, and uh, his death was uh, way too soon for most of us. Well, we want you to know that you can get all of Ron's columns in a number of newspapers. You can also get them online. If you go to Huckabee.tv, we can connect you to Ron Hart and know how to find his columns. 